There are a lot of myths involving aviation and the profession of the pilot. Some of them are true and some of them are just ridiculous. Today we are going to confirm or bust five of them. Subscribe if you like it. Welcome to Airspace Explained. Aviation myth number one. Turbulence is very dangerous. Ah yes, turbulence. It always seems to get worse the second you switch off the fasten seatbelt sign. But what is turbulence? Basically, and very oversimplified, it is just air that is not moving nicely and evenly, we call that laminar flow, but instead flowing in a disorderly manner. Since the wind kind of rides through the air the way a surfboard cuts through water, these disturbances of the air can be felt, not unlike driving at high speed on a gravel road. The larger these disturbances are, the more intensely they may be felt during flight. They can occur in the vicinity of thunderstorms or if strong wind blows over terrain such as mountains or forests when approaching an airport. But more insidiously, they may occur in clear air with no warning. So, is turbulence dangerous? To the aircraft? No. It's built to withstand forces much greater than even the most severe turbulence. And to the occupants of the plane? Well, if you follow the instructions of your crew and fasten your seatbelt whenever you are seated or instructed to do so, then usually no. But there have been rare occurrences of severe clear air turbulence that have led to injuries of passengers or crew. Bumping your head on the ceiling really hurts and cabin crew members are especially endangered by sudden turbulence. The beverage and food trolleys they have to push weigh a lot and they may cause injury if they hit one of them. So myth busted? Well kind of. Usually there's nothing to be concerned about when encountering turbulence. As long as you're strapped in, you're good. Aviation myth number two. Pilots cannot have the same food. A hero's dream. Both pilots ate some bad fish and are now slightly indisposed, and you, the avid flight simulator enthusiast, can now land the massive plane and save everyone from harm. A realistic scenario? Well, no, for several reasons. First off, landing the plane, even with a lot of flight sim hours, might prove to be more difficult than you had imagined. But that is a topic for a whole other video. But can pilots have the same food? Nope. There are clear regulations against that. Technically, we can't even have the same food when we're having dinner the night before our flight. If you ever had food poisoning, you probably know why. Cases of food poisoning do happen on the flight deck as well. Luckily, pilots are trained to handle a plane alone in case one crew member becomes incapacitated. But this is then considered a very serious event in which one even has to declare an emergency. So, myth confirmed. Aviation myth number three. Both pilots must always be fully monitoring the systems and can never leave the flight deck. Think back to your last long haul flight. What did you do? You probably had dinner, watched a movie or two, slept for a few hours, had breakfast, went to the loo once or twice, and when you finally arrived you were glad to be able to leave the plane. But what about pilots? Well, pilots are people too. We are obliged to monitor the flight at every second we are airborne, but we get some help from the autopilot these days. A big part of flying is just cruise flight, during which not as many tasks remain to be done. The autopilot usually tracks the flight plan very closely, and us pilots get to take a bit of a mental break from the many tasks we had to perform during taxi, takeoff, and climb out. But even during cruise, one must monitor closely what the plane is doing, and the communications via radio must be done quite frequently. Still, during the time we are in cruise, it is allowed for one of the flight crew members to rest a while, while the other monitors the systems and the aircraft. During that time, one may have a meal, go to the restroom or even have a short nap during long night flights. The aviation industry realized that this helps crews be alert when they arrive at their destinations, where the most challenging part of the flight takes place, the landing. So myth busted. Aviation myth number 4. The autopilot does everything. This is one I hear a lot. Hey, you have a dream job, you just sit there while the autopilot does everything for you and then you arrive at your destination and you go to the beach on company time. Well, as you can guess, this one is quite far from the truth. Yes, the autopilot takes a lot of menial tasks from us. And technically, it can do almost everything on its own. It is available a few seconds after takeoff and it can even perform a landing at its own in certain conditions. But note the phrasing here, in certain conditions. If it's very windy, the plane will no longer be able to land on its own. Also for automatic landings, special conditions and installation must be present, and these conditions allow fewer planes per hour to land at a certain airport, making the option very unattractive for airport managers. 
I always compare the autopilot to cruise control in your car. It is very convenient during long highway drives because it takes the tedious task of maintaining a certain speed away from you. If you have lane assist in your car as well, great, that reduces your workload even more. But it does not take away the task of decision making. At what speed do you want to drive? In which lane? Which exit do you take? And how do you avoid evening traffic? All those tasks will not be done by cruise control. It is the same for our autopilot. It will take us anywhere we tell it to, but we must tell it where we want to go and how we want to get there, and we must constantly update these parameters. Also, we perform 100% of takeoffs and about 99% of landings ourselves. So, myth definitely busted. For now. Who knows where machine learning will take us one day. Aviation myth number 5. Pilots fly for free when they go on holiday. This one depends largely on the airline you fly for. Most offer some kind of benefits to their employees regarding leisure travel, but I would guess no airline allows pilots to fly for free anymore these days. Most will offer so-called standby tickets at a very low rate. Standby tickets mean you have no guarantee of being transported. You show up at the airport and if there's a free seat on the plane, you get to travel. Most of the time this works, but it can be very inconvenient if it doesn't and there is only one flight to your destination or home per day. But it works most of the time and is very nice to have. Fares are usually very low, a ticket for a 10 hour intercontinental flight in business class usually goes for $150 to $200, depending on the destination. So myth busted, but still it is nice that we can fly at reduced fares. That's it for today's video. If you'd like to see more of these, please subscribe and comment down below. See you in the next one.